Now, Jeremiah 1, 5, it says this, and this is God talking to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. And that was Jeremiah's role. And his identity and who he was enabled him to fulfill that role. His role in doing what he did did not make him who he was. Who he was, who he was known, known to be by God, enabled him to be the prophet to the nations. So our destiny is entwined with our identity. And we are all known and are still known by him. We were all known and are still known by him today. And we can come to know what he knows about us. And that is the journey of restoring first love that we're all on. And as it goes on, and this, this is continually a progressive experience, God is speaking to Jeremiah, but he has e spoken to each of us before we came out of heaven, before we came into this earthly sphere. He knew me. He knew you before he formed us in the womb, before we had a physical form in which our soul could be formed in and our spirit could come into. He spoke us into being. And the frequency of our identity and the image of what he spoke still vibrates and echoes within us. And that is what draws us into discovering the truth. And if we don't know that truth, something in us, like a splinter in our mind, keeps picking away at us because there's got to be more than this. And, you know, if you have a splinter, I, I am in a workshop working a lot with woodwork. I get splinters sometimes and tiny little bit of wood can be very, very irritating. And I've got a set of really sharp uh, tweezers in which I can get those things out. But if you leave them in there, they get infected. And most of us are actually living in a less than kind of infected life. We're infected by the world in which we've been pressed into its mold rather than coming from the truth of who we really are. But we live and move and know our true being only in him. That was a quote from a uh, Greek poet, I think, or philosopher that Paul quoted. And it is true. It is the truth. We live and move and can only know our true being in him. We begin to know who we are through intimate encounters where we are entwined and entrained to resonate with our true frequency and image as seen in him. So as we are close to God, the higher frequency of the truth of who we are begins to draw us and entrain us into agreement with that frequency. And this is literally what happens if you put two guitars next to each other and you pluck one string on one guitar, the other string will begin to vibrate. And that is what God, why God wants us to come into a deeper place of intimacy so we can get close enough to him to feel and sense the frequency of who we are and be entrained into agreement with that so that we begin to know we can know God and ourselves by hearing him call our name, sing our song, infuse us with knowledge and entrain us to resonate as we dance together in intimacy, heart to heart, because the dance is a heart to heart dance. My heart is next to his heart and I feel and sense his heart towards me more and more. So all of us, we are not some vague thought that God had sometime in the past, as if it was a random thought. We existed even before we were in the womb. We existed even before there was a creation within God. And we actually were present when creation was at work and we saw it and we're connected to it. And we are, in a sense, part of it. And figuratively, that's why we're made of the dust of the ground. But we existed spiritually even before that formed. God always knew us. But we need to start seeing ourselves from his perspective. Since intimacy is two way, we actually knew him too. We knew more about God than we know now in our origin. 
And we are rediscovering the truth and the wonderful truth about who God is. The dance reveals our origin in him and reveals the true nature of who he is. He consecrated us, which means he set us apart or he chose us for relationship with him, but with an identity as a son designed with purpose because God has purpose. His purpose is to demonstrate love and to bring all things together into a loving relationship with him. So God had a purpose for your life that he knew and that you knew before you were actually formed. It's part of your very being. He has appointed each of us for relationship where we're, we're, where we who we are can be outworked in various roles and tasks and positions that are aligned to who we are. God does not call you to do something that he not did not make you to be. It's like if God told me I was going to be a potter rather than a woodworker, I would struggle because he'd not made me to be a potter. You know, that isn't a skill set that I have. Now, I could possibly learn, but it would feel alien to me. But actually, woodworking feels very natural to me because I think it's part of how God framed me, like being a gardener or being different. It's like God was a gardener. He is a gardener. And therefore, being a gardener is a reflection of who he is. And some of us are connected that way. Others not interested in gardening at all, but they're interested in something else that reflects who we are as a son of God. So it is part of your very being. He has appointed each of us for relationship where who we are can be at work in those things. And God wants us to outwork who we are, to be who we are. For Jeremiah, that was a prophet to the nations. What name and identity has he given you? Because he has given you a name and he has given you an identity. Who has he called you to be? What has he appointed you to do out of who you are? Not alien to it. You're in a safe place of peace and rest. God wants to meet you as father in that place. and unveil something deeper of who you are, of who he is. So begin to fix your thoughts on seeing the Father face to face. Think about it. Set the desire of your heart upon it. Think of the Father embracing you, hugging you, let those thoughts fill your imagination to create an image, a doorway. Picture that door in your spirit and choose to open the door. And your choice is an invitation to the Father to come, to hug you, to again to breathe his breath of life into you so you can receive the living words of his breath. Breathe it in. Hear his words, I love you. I love you, my son, my daughter. I love you. be open to hear some of the vast sum of his thoughts. Let them restore you to his original desire for you. Maybe you'll resonate with them in your spirit. Don't try and figure it out. Be open for an infusion of his thoughts about you, of who you really are. 